Welcome back to This Is A Commander channel, where this is a Commander channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, episode 144. Today's episode is going to take a look at the Layers system in Magic, which is the system that handles how continuous effects interact with each other. It's widely considered one of the top boogeymen in understanding the deeper rules of magic, as evidenced by last week's episode, in which I explained how through layers, a card like Darksteel Mutation that says that the enchanted creature loses all other abilities, yet when placed on Bellow, Bard of the Brambles, still results in a Bellow whose ability is working just enough to apply its whole effect to your larger artifacts and enchantments before it is then turned off by the mutation. And yet a card like Song of the Dryads that doesn't include any wording about it causing its enchanted permanent to lose any abilities does actually result in the bellow not being able to animate your artifacts and enchantments. Whew. So, as expected, even after the breakdown there in the video, there's still a lot of confusion, rightfully so, as this stuff is confusing and it can be quite counterintuitive. But I also saw some animosity towards layers. Not so much in my video's comments, but uh, the video ended up making its way onto Reddit uh, and even made uh, quite a big post. Um, on the Magic the Circle Jerking subreddit, uh, and there were some pretty negative comments in there about layers. Now that brings me to the purpose of today's episode. I will not be doing a deep dive into every aspect of the layer system. In fact, this episode will be assuming that you're already aware of these different layers, what the seven of them are and their sublayers, uh, but more so, I'll be providing what is, I hope, a very helpful metaphor for understanding an aspect, a very confusing specific aspect of layers and how they work the way that they do. And then I will be going into uh, some alternatives that people often suggest uh, to the current layer system uh, and how those just don't work. I will not be claiming that Layers is a perfect system, nor will I claim that it is the best possible system that WotC could come up with. Uh, this is just purely an attempt to help players understand why Layers function the way they do, uh, so that they can avoid making mistakes during their deck building process and also during their own games. If you have a consistent playgroup and you want to rule zero something so that, like, the Darksteel mutation actually will cause Bellow to not animate things, then that's great uh, that you have access to a group like that. Uh, but for others, for other players who do not have a consistent play group that can always just rule zero that kind of scenario, it is the comprehensive rules that keep our games consistent, and that's what I'm here to help with. So, let's begin. As I had mentioned in that Bellow episode, oftentimes the part that confuses a lot of players is the fact that once applied in an earlier layer, an ability will continue to apply in all subsequent layers, even if that ability is removed in a later layer. This uh, specifically is in reference to CR 613.6. The metaphor that I hope will help to visualize this is think of the layers like a recipe for a meal that you're cooking. You're going to go through your cookbook page by page and perform each of the instructions when you get to them. So you start on page one that instructs you to add five teaspoons of salt. Then turn to page two, which instructs you to add three teaspoons of sugar. And then it also instructs you to use pepper on page four instead of the original ingredient. And then you turn to page 3, which instructs you to add 5 teaspoons of olive oil, and then it also instructs you to use corn on page 1 instead. But you've already added the salt from page 1, so it's too late and we cannot remove it from the dish. And then finally you flip to page 4 and it instructs you to add 3 teaspoons of paprika, but you remember that on page 2 it told you to use pepper instead, and so you add 3 teaspoons of pepper. And that is the metaphor. The layers are like going page by page through a recipe. There is no going back to pull an ingredient out from, you know, uh, from the food, uh, that salt, uh, pepper, sugar, etc. It has already been mixed into the concoction. 
When these sorts of bad results come about, the non-intuitive situations like bellow and dark steel mutation, uh, people often trash on the layers and say that it is a bad system because it leads to these sorts of situations, these counterintuitive or non-intuitive kind of situations. That if Watsi were to change the layer system up, it would lead to a better game environment. And yeah, that would be really nice if they could just come up with a better system. And a better system might actually exist, but it's not easy. There are two very common suggestions that I see come up often that try to offer a fix to the current layers system. So let's address those. The problematic part, again, is CR613.6 and how abilities persist even if removed. So what if we just bump the ability layer up higher on the list so that it is an earlier layer? Now, Bellow would be dependent on the mutation removing Bellow's static ability, and so it would re be removed before being able to animate and grant the abilities to your artifacts and enchantments. This closes one door of a non-intuitive result, but how many other doors for non-intuitive results does it now open? Let's take a look at a situation in which you control both a Knight Exemplar, which grants other Knights you control indestructible and also gives them plus one plus one, and then you play the Maskwood Nexus, which makes all of your creatures on the battlefield all have all creature types. So your non-Knights actually are Knights now. With the ability layer applying earlier now, the exemplar will give your knights indestructible, but then your grizzly bears isn't yet a knight. Then we get to the type layer in which the nexus adds the knight type to that bear, and then we get to the power toughness layer, and the exemplar adds the plus one plus one to the bear. So you end up with a bear that is only getting half of the effect from the exemplar, which that is probably a non-intuitive result that isn't clearly conveyed by just reading the cards. So when this happens, what if we just have the layers loop back around and grab something that they should now include? Well, here's a new scenario then. You control Weatherlight Completed with four counters on it, which says that as long as Weatherlight Completed has four or more Phyresis counters on it, it's a Phyrexian creature in addition to its other types. Then your opponent plays their dress down, which is an enchantment that says creatures lose all abilities. Because of its ability and having the four counters on it, the weather light is a creature, and so the dress down will affect it, causing it to lose that ability, making it no longer be a creature anymore. But because it's not a creature anymore, the dress down will stop applying to it, which means it will regain its abilities and still have those four counters on it, making it once again become a creature. And thus, we have now created this endless loop that ends up stalling out the game. And finally, I've seen some suggestions that the system be entirely timestamp based, that we basically remove all of the different types of layers and there just be a single layer of all continuous effects that it is based on timestamps. Here's an example of how that would then create some broken situations. I control Glorious Anthem, which gives my creatures plus one plus one, but then you cast Confiscate on one of my creatures, letting you gain control of it. So your control effect has the later timestamp after the Anthem has already given its buff to my creature. So now we have a very non-intuitive result of a card saying it only buffs my creatures, yet it has already started applying a buff to a creature that I no longer control. You get into some weird situations like that. So again, I want to emphasize that I don't believe that the layers system is flawless, as it clearly is not, uh, but I'm also not saying that it's the best system that we could have. There is probably something out there, some way that it could be handled better, but someone just has to come up with that way, not an easy task, and then there's the question of, if that way were to be discovered, could it even be implemented into the game at this point? Throughout its history, Magic has experienced some pretty massive shifts in how its underlying mechanics work. There was a time when rules disputes were handled by a coin flip, and players played with ANSI, 
Then we had the creation of the DCI and a strict comprehensive rules uh, to better define things. And then also, Anti was removed from the game, which meant that some of the most powerful cards ever had to be banned from the game, like Contract from Below. The Legend rule has also been changed. Multiple times, in fact. Uh, before 2010, Mana Burn used to be a key component of the game, but was then removed, making certain cards grow immensely in their power, like Mana Drain and Braid of Fire. And one of the largest shifts in how the game worked came in 6th edition, when many uh, aspects of the game were changed. Uh, combat became its own actual step. Uh, damage prevention was no longer a uh, step. Uh, artifacts no longer turned off when tapped. And then the biggest change is that batches were no longer a thing, and WotC created this crazy thing called the stack. Yep, that's right. The stack was not an original aspect of magic. And with this change, you could actually counter someone's dark ritual now if you wanted, because it had to go to the stack. These were some wild times to play magic when 6th edition rules uh, were implemented into the game. Uh, not to mention, golly, Urza Saga block was, uh, was just crazy time for competitive magic. Um, but could it be done... Today, Could these kind of massive shifts be done again today? Funny enough, because of the internet, players have actually more access and easier access to information about magic. So if they did make this massive shift in the underlying mechanics of the game, it would be easier for them to propagate that information out to players. And yet... Because the game is now over 30 years old, and it is so ingrained in our minds, it seems like a shift, you know, like changing up the layers system, may not be something that WotC would ever even want to attempt. So for now, we're stuck with the layers as they are, and I hope that the videos I make here on this channel can help as many players as possible to improve their understanding of the deeper, more complex aspects of this great game and help them to have some more fun in their games by getting around feels bads and didn't knows and things like that. If any of you have any ideas of how you might try to improve the game, what would you do? Uh, oh, also, for those of you still watching, have you ever even heard of the batch system? Uh, I'm curious. Uh, I've wanted to do a video on that for a long time, explaining it and how things changed. Uh, but I just don't know if anyone would even care about the batch in a system that was changed, um, my goodness, what, 24-ish years ago, 25 years ago? Uh, so yeah, would, would any of you even care about a video about the batch? Um, were any of you around when the batch existed? How about Mana Burn, or, you know, what legend system do you remember was in the game when you actually first started playing? Just curious as to any of these kind of things, you know, feel free to comment on any of this stuff. I like, I've been playing Magic for a long, long time, so I remember a lot of this old, old stuff. And it's always interesting seeing um, where people came in to Magic at the time. Uh, so yeah, anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you have found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. Crazy enough, I also have done this video with a uh, part of my... I don't know if I sound differently. Uh, hopefully I don't sound too differently, but uh, I chipped a molar... Uh, the other day, so I've I've kind of been talking. I've had it now for a few days. I've gotten used to it. Um, but yeah, I've kind of had a weird uh, speech pattern uh, of late when talking with my customers and stuff. I've I've had to talk talk through my teeth like this because my tongue was getting grinded and ripped to shreds from my uh, the the point on my molar. But uh, I think I've gotten better at it. I'm I'm I think there's just now a callus on my tongue. I don't know why I'm still talking about this. This is. One of those many weird things where I keep talking after I make a video. Not sure why. Don't even know how many people stick around for these. But, golly, I don't even know if this video is going to do well. That AI video did horrible. The thing has like less than 300 views. Why am I still talking? All right, I'm going to end this video now. Ta-ta.